uh, Senate Bill 188. Welcome to Senate Health and Welfare, and uh, Thank you. good morning. Uh, good morning, Chairman. Thank you, members, very much. In Louisiana, we have about 40% of our 4.5 million citizens identified as the working poor. These are people who are employed and who pay taxes, but whose assets and earnings are insufficient to cover all of their basic needs. <laughs> Through Medicaid expansion, more than 400,000 of our citizens have enrolled in Medicaid, resulting in a quarter of the state's population being covered by government-funded insurance. So one of the challenges facing our state is ensuring the financial stability and sustainability of the Medicaid program, whose costs have increased in Louisiana from $6 billion in 2012 to more than $12 billion in 2018, with an anticipated growth to more than $14 billion in 2021. The growth is unsustainable for our state. So in order to continue to provide coverage for those who genuinely need it, we must help our able-bodied citizens who are able to work to find employment or participate in community engagement programs. States around the country are taking steps to, to, their, to stabilize their Medicaid programs while simultaneously improving health outcomes and the overall quality of life for its members by helping them with more than just health insurance, but with opportunities for more community engagement and employment that can transition them out of Medicaid and into self-sufficiency and private market coverage. So as promised last week when I um, was first before you, I have met with, um, <clears throat> it feels like hundreds, but, but realistically it's probably closer to 50 uh, stakeholders, both um, those from the Department of Health, uh, DCFS, uh, the hospital groups, many interested stakeholders have offered input into this bill and I believe that what we have before you is a bill that satisfies the majority of their concerns and what we have worked really hard to do in general, I will say this last week, is to do two things. One is to broaden the bill sufficiently to give the department the flexibility that they need to develop kind of the best game plan going forward that works for the state of Louisiana. Um, and secondly, we worked really hard to try to um, maximize the systems that we currently have in place. As you know, we currently have a requirement for Medicaid recipients who are getting uh, SNAP benefits to, I mean, we have for SNAP benefits, for folks getting SNAP benefits, there is a work requirement. And so there are some systems in place already between the SNAP program uh, and the workforce people. And so we have worked to tie into that system with LDH. The other thing that we did is we shortened the age group. So instead of uh, Medicaid, the Medicaid expansion population are able-bodied adults with no dependents that are not disabled you know, from ages 19 to 64. And what we have done is we ha have um, modified that to be 19 to 49, because again, that ties back into the SNAP program. So what I'd like to do, if I could, Mr. Chairman, is to ask um, that you all would consider accepting the amendments and let me talk about this all together. Uh, fine. Uh, we do have a question from Senator Clater, and, and would I know the committee would like right now is if, if you could go over each amendment point by point, we can leave those discussions open as we go through each amendment and just kind of have a working meeting where we understand kind of the rationale for each one. Uh, Senator Clater? Uh, yes, sir. On the amendment, um, I know I'm no longer on uh, finance, but I'm very familiar with the fiscal notes. Does the amendment affect the fiscal note? Yeah, yes, it will. And Senator Hewitt and I did have that conversation right before committee. It, it seems that we may, as a committee, as we go through the amendments, we may want to take a second look at the fiscal note, see what it reflects back. But why don't we see what the pleasure of the committee is as we, we look through the amendments? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, Senator, if you could, if you just could go over each amendment and the rationale to it, and, and we'll, uh, we'll just f start that discussion with the committee members and yourself. <coughs> Yes, I, I will attempt to do that. It's a, it's a significant amount of amendments. Uh, i tell you what I'd like to be able to do if I could first, if I could just give you, again, sort of a high level of collectively what the, what the amendments and the bill do together, 
Could I do that? And then I will go back through and walk through each of the sure. amendments. Sure. And if you need staff to jump in, we, we uh, Ms. Peck will uh, join in and add to the clarity of the amendments because I know you've been working with a lot of groups studying different best practices. So Ms. Peck can join in and, and help you with that. I appreciate that. Uh, in general, let me just give you the overall timeline of what this bill is doing. This bill is basically asking the department to submit to joint budget by October of 2017, kind of an outline of how it would approach this problem, and not the problem, but approach this project in implementing the Medicaid expansion sustainability reforms. That would happen October of 2017. And then in January of 2018, basically they would come forward to joint budget with the scope of the waivers, the waiver, as well as the implementation plan that would be in place. And they'll ask for approval from joint budget to do that. So at that point, that's when the uh, department then would go forward with the waivers and prepare the waiver by August of 2018. So between now and January 2018 is really the planning time. It is the time when the department is gonna lead an effort to work with all the stakeholders to build both a plan and scope out the waiver. Um, okay, so that's kind of the high level of, of, of the plan. Most of the work between now and then, again, is staff time and kind of scoping everything out and working through the details. Okay, so Ms. Peck, can I ask you to walk through, we'll just walk through the amendments specifically one as the, the uh, chairman requested. So Mr. Chairman and committee, the amendment number three, that's the legislative intent language that we added. So that's what Senator Hewitt was reading through just previously. And this is establishing really the, her intent behind this bill and why she feels like this bill is important. Amendment number four, the, the original bill just directed the department to submit the waiver. Starting on amendment number four, Senator Hewitt's trying to establish some parameters and timelines. So you'll see what she's saying is in order to ensure the sustainability of Medicaid in Louisiana, particularly those covered by Medicaid expansion, then it shifts into a bunch of deliverables, the things that we want the department to consider. We borrowed from um, Senator Nevers, Louisiana First, America Next bill, Amendment number seven, which is asking the department to come back in October with a work outline for us. So again, instead of just throwing the bill at them and saying go submit the waiver, we're asking them to work in partnership with us to bring back some specific deliverables. So the first thing they'll do on October 1st, 2017 is bring back their work outline. Then the other thing that um, Senator Hewitt was very conscious of, the feedback we got from the department and the administration was the specificity in the original bill. So the next set of amendments are giving broad parameters to the department so that the administration can devise this program in a way that they think is most appropriate. So we've taken out amendment number nine, we've taken out the requirement for 20 work hours, and we've left that up to the department to decide. So amount of work hours that they deem to be appropriate and a determination that they can can make um, since that was a, a concern that we heard from them. The amendment number 11 is giving the secretary the authority to expand exemptions from this program. So Senator Hewitt has included in the bill the criteria of individuals who would be exempt from this, but we've given the secretary the authority to expand that even further. Amendment number 12 outlines certain things that would help this process move along and this is based on information we got from the department and the administration that they will work with the department of children and family services and the louisiana workforce commission they'll work with the medicaid managed care plans they'll consult with nonprofit volunteer organizations they will uh, provide they may provide provisions for cost sharing such as predictable monthly premium payments co-payments health savings accounts and reward accounts this is something that other states are doing and other states have currently pending in their waivers so this is not a shall this is a may that the department should consider this if this is something that's appropriate for louisiana the amendment number 15 identifies um, that other states currently have similar waivers pending with CMS. So 15 encourages the department to work with those states so as not to duplicate efforts. Amendment number 16 puts in the stop gap of going back to the joint budget committee. So by January 1st, the plan developed by the department will go back to the joint budget committee 
Then the, um, the department had requested additional time to do this. They said it would take about a year. So they come back again in August of 2018 for approval by the Joint Budget Committee. So again, is another stopgap. If on August 1st they come back to the Joint Budget Committee for approval and they approve it, that's when the waiver would be submitted. I think Senator Hewitt can bring some clarity to that because she did visit with some of the Kentucky uh, uh, leadership and, and ask them about. So, Senator, maybe you might want to help you. Senator Clayton on that. Yes, Thank Senator, you. we uh, we did have um, a very helpful phone conference with folks from Kentucky, both with the Department of Health, uh, the governor's chief of staff, and others about their proposal. And it's, they were very excited. It's a very exciting program. And they seem to be gearing up for uh, an expectation that they will have approval from CMS in January. And one thing that gives me great hope is um, the Secretary of Health and Hospitals did send out a letter to all the governors and basically said, if you submit waivers, Medicaid 1115 waivers with XYZ, much of which is represented in this bill, we will give it strong consideration. We will likely approve it. And so there, much of what was included in that letter, and I can provide you copies of that, you know, are built into the Kentucky waiver request. They are what we have modeled in this bill and what, you know, we've talked with the department about conceptually the kinds of things that we think would be good policy to move forward. So, Senator Schaubert, you still have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Hewitt, uh, in discussions with you uh, about the bill, as you know, I am in support because I do believe for everything I just said that we need to get more eligible people back to work. I know in conversations with you offline that there are other states that are going through this transition or realizing positive economic impacts for their state, as well as mitigating those losses that their particular departments of health um, may be enduring kind of like we've endured over the last few years would you consider maybe converting this into a study resolution senator shavier i think that's an excellent idea and i would be very amenable to doing that you know i feel very very strongly that this is an issue that we are as a state we are going to have to come to grips with is how to sustain our medicaid program because we're going to be adding people to the medicaid roles all the time unfortunately and we have to find ways to continue to move other people off by helping them by helping them find jobs and to get job training and to become employed and to rise up out of poverty and that really is the driver behind all of this not only does it help the state as you've pointed out but more importantly it helps people and our goal should never be to keep people on Medicaid because financially that works out to be good for the state. That it, it, it really is about getting them out of poverty and moving them into private insurance because we know that when people are working, they have healthier outcomes. And I do, I do believe strongly that that is the direction that we need to go. And so, but you know, the issues that you all have raised are the same ones we've been talking about all week. There's a lot of numbers to crunch and to understand both all the costs involved in going through the process and how to deal with those that might fall off of Medicaid, how to work through all of that and compare those to the benefits. You know, what we have heard from Kentucky is that when you put all that together, they still see significant financial benefits and both on the state and the federal level, like $350 right. million dollars savings to the state of Kentucky over the next five years. Well, we haven't had the opportunity to drill down on that and to understand all those numbers. And so I think the, the study resolution is a great idea. It will give us more of a chance to work through it, develop kind of a game plan, and then have more discussion when we have more numbers and be able to talk about it. Any objections from the committee on this issue, y'all? Yes. Well, we, we thank you. I, I want to personally thank you because you've asked me to sit down on, on three meetings along with the administration, along with LDH, along with Workforce Commission, along with so many groups. You have spent a collective amount of hours on this, and, and your heart is in the right place to say, how can we make it done? And um, we, we look forward to working with you as a committee. And I think this will take pressures off of having mandates from a cost constraint standpoint. And uh, we, we thank you for your leadership. And we look forward to a continued dialogue. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. Thank you, members. Thank you. Thank you, members.